So I thought when we started that, uh, it starts actually on Monday. We're doing little teasers for it now. And I thought, you know what, why don't we have her in the studio? Why don't we chat a little bit with her? Because, you know, I've never met her before. I'm really excited to get a chance to meet her. So I wanted to say good morning to uh, Chocolatier Constance Pop. Good morning. Welcome to Classic 107. Good morning, Michael. Thank you for inviting me. You're just down the street. You're on Provence. So I it's not walked. all that far. You could have walked over. It's a beautiful morning out. Mm-hmm. It is. A, it's super nice. It's, a, it's, a, it's another good chocolate day. Another good chocolate day. And every day <laughs> every is a good chocolate is. especially at this mm-hmm. time of the morning. Every time of the day, every day is a good time. You can eat chocolate in the morning, of course, and throughout mm-hmm. the day. You can have chocolate throughout the day, mm-hmm. all year round. I agree. I do. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, people may or may not know. I mean, you are your, your main thing now is you, you make chocolate. You're a chocolatier. That's your thing. You didn't start out that way, though. You came to that fairly later on. I want to tell us a little about how what you used to do before you got involved in making chocolate? Uh, well, first off, I'm from Montreal originally, and so the, just the sort of the, the food climate and just the the art artistic element of Montreal really really has affected my sensibilities and stayed with me throughout my my whole my whole life. Uh, we moved to Churchill, Manitoba, uh, as as a young child. I lived there. And then, then to Winnipeg, and all of these different places uh, um, really influenced the, the type of early career that I started in, which is natural resource management. And all the while, I was always interested in whole foods and, and, uh, and of course, chocolate. My father would shop at Bernard Calville, actually, and bring home really good quality chocolate. Um, coming from Montreal, he always w- was able to suss out very interesting places to, to get um, interesting food or or something that's a little bit uh, different, avant-garde. In Churchill, we would have muktuk. Mm-hmm. We would have arctic char that was actually um, made in dishwashers. You, you, you take arctic char and you cover it in tinfoil and you put it in your dishwasher. And all of those things were really fascinating to, to us and our family. And when we came to Winnipeg, my father would go to these interesting places in the North End. And this is before we have the cool forks and so on. Mm-hmm. So I was just very affected by that, and then in my own household, making my own uh, breads and cheeses before it was even popular to do so, and and chocolate. And uh, I would take it to work. At the time, I was the environmental manager for Palliser Furniture, and people would say, wow, you should do this for real. And I thought, who takes their hobby Mm -hmm. and leaves their full-time day job and and make a business out of it? Who's crazy enough to do that? (laughs) Well, it just doesn't seem practical or sensible, but but then it overtook me, and, and I needed to do it. And instead of renting kitchen space for at the time was $50 an hour. I thought I might as well have my own kitchen. Well, I might as well have a shop at the front of the kitchen so I can sell my chocolate and showcase my chocolate. And so in very short order, uh, one thing led to another. And and that was uh, this year. This year, it'll be nine years ago. So we just celebrated our our eighth year anniversary on December 1st. Congratulations. Now, (laughs) what does one do to become a chocolatier? I mean, I guess you go to a certain school, you learn certain trades. Is Is there somewhere here in Canada you can go do that? Oh, for sure. There is not so much in Winnipeg although they're starting to teach uh, chocolate as an element at the uh, River River Community College in their patisserie program. Uh, Not not so much when when I first started out. Uh, There's some very good places across Canada where you can learn. I felt that the best place uh, from my research was in Montreal. Montreal is the epicenter uh, for the chocolate industry in North America. So not only did it have really, really good high caliber instruction, it has also an industry to support chocolate, which is equipment, uh, the, the, the things that you need for chocolate, like tools and equi- and, and uh, packaging and, and all of that. There'll be companies that are in existence just for chocolate. And they have a very strong chocolate climate. They have um, lots of chocolate shops and lots of people who really appreciate chocolate and a very strong diversity of artisan chocolate shops. So, so to go there, you can, you can, you can learn from a, a bunch of different levels of, of how to run a shop to what what makes good chocolate by visiting people who who own businesses making and selling chocolates to to the the various components of the industry and that's what I did when I did go to Montreal I would go and visit all of these places with my long list of questions uh, at the time I knew just about nothing mm-hmm. uh, just only what I liked but even that's subjective so there was a lot a lot of learning to do so I then became an expert chocolatier and uh, and now, now we're teaching the ladies, uh, which is who they are right now in our shop, and I hope they're listening because they're working <laughs> in the shop, uh, <laughs> uh, Kimberly and Tara, uh, and now they're, they're doing the same as what I did before by going to Montreal and Chicago. Uh, there's another school in Chicago as well as the French Pastry School in Chicago that, that we've all attended. 
So is it possible? I mean, you know, I mean, maybe not necessarily here in Winnipeg. There's not a lot of people making chocolate. Is it possible when you're making chocolate to make it your own? Like, what can you do that, for example, if I was to give you a piece of chocolate, would you be able to tell that you made it? How can you how can you put your own stamp on uh, on a chocolate creation? By using very interesting flavor combinations is one way, and we've become known for that. And mm-hmm. we. As far as I know, and for sure in Winnipeg, if not in Canada, we're the only people that use things like red beets to go in our truffles. We have a red beet truffle with caraway seed and sea salt. So if you you know chocolate, (laughs) it it is. Actually, chocolate's a vegetable. It's good for you. And and good quality chocolate, premium grade chocolate, should have five or less ingredients in it. And -hmm. and so then if you're if you're making that with whole foods, it's 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 something that's uh, enjoyable to eat, but also good good to eat. Mm -hmm. Uh, Something that we've just started is uh, we've just uh, purchased our own cocoa beans. We have our own uh, uh, microbatch equipment to make our own process our own chocolate. So if, if I think, I think what we're going to see, and I think there's a lot of artisan shops that are, are now endeavoring in this. And I think when you become to know how we we make our chocolate, you can start to be able to distinguish not only the 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 ingredient combinations but also the type of chocolate that we're 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 going to be making. What we're really only doing right now is our own bars. We're not really using this chocolate in our in our in our bonbon bars and barks at this mm-hmm. point. Uh, I, I think uh, they stand alone. We have some very very unique pieces in our shop, like the Manitou bar. Uh, which is cut into the shape of the province, but it's filled with a lot of Manitoba-made ingredients. So that's another way of distinguishing that you're, yourself that you're using a lot of, of things that are that are very rare to get or very unique to get mm-hmm. that you can't find in other places. I know um, my favorite chocolate shops in North America, and I can tell who they are. I because I I sh- I shop and I and I and I um, obtain these chocolates often enough that I that I can I can tell who they are and I can also tell the skill level just like one could could with a, a mm-hmm. musical instrument uh, when or a wine for example you can almost discern the the, 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 the notes the, and the flavors well, and yeah. the grape and mm-hmm. and people can take it I don't think that you can that will never really happen with the cocoa bean I think it's um it doesn't age to the same degree that a, a, a grape would, uh, but but you know there's there, we're all going to have our own style of how we how how the depth of, of roasting that we do, uh, and so I think you're still going to be able to tell uh, who makes it, but you won't be able to tell the vintage, hmm. like you would with with grapes. Amazing, huh? or beer. I think you can. I think we're getting, we're getting, we're almost getting a little bit too and too over involved with of, right. Mm-hmm. In, in the end, I, I almost don't want to be. I, I don't want to overthink it. Mm-hmm. I just, I just like, I just think it's very interesting, and I like to delve into it as much as I can. However, I don't want, I don't, I don't want myself or, or people who appreciate what we do to, 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 to get ahead of themselves. At the end of the day. I just hope that they find what we do super beautiful and super delicious. Well, I had some of the Tanzanian <laughs> chocolate. Oh, That's what good. I did, the dark chocolate, 75%. Oh, I had good. a nice big piece of that the other day oh. from your shop. It was delicious. What did you find about that? Uh, very smooth. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, it's the dark chocolate. It didn't have a lot of, uh, you know, some people think dark, dark chocolate can be bitter. I don't find that at all. I just find it's a more pure taste that you don't, you know, it's, it's not so much about the milk. It's more about the chocolate and the bean. And, um, so I just, I enjoyed it. I had a nice, I shared it with my family when I got home and they've, they've, they've learned to like dark chocolate as well. I used to bring it home thinking, ah, I'm the only one that likes it. So no one's going to eat my chocolate. And now they've learned to like dark chocolate as well. So, well, there again, good quality, dark chocolate mm-hmm. and well-processed, good quality, dark chocolate will taste delicious. Mm-hmm. And in the Tanzania case, it's, it's quite fruity tasting. I don't know if you, went, at first when you, well, if it tastes no. really refreshing, mm-hmm. like it almost tasted, it tastes cool. And mm. then it tastes uh, a little bit fruity. And I'll notice that when I go have go have some more later today. <laughs> if you try, if you try the Cuban chocolate, it actually tastes a little bit smoky. Believe it or not, cigars. <laughs> so exactly. So we actually mold those into into wow. cigars. But I brought you a present, Michael. Uh, wow! In keeping of of this wonderful station making classical and jazz music. Look at that. Uh, one thing I did in my past was very 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 briefly with uh, principal harpist Richard uh, Turner with the WSO, who was my instructor at the time. Uh, try to teach me how to play orchestral harp. So, of course, I have an orchestral harp chocolate mold for you. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. This is amazing. <laughs> and it's dark chocolate. <laughs> Look at that. It's beautiful. You're, you're gonna, you have to go to our uh, 
I'll hold it up in front of the camera here. You can go to our website, check out the video later on, and uh, we'll post it there. It's a beautiful harp. I'll post some pictures of it. Thank you very much. Well, it's important to make chocolate really accessible for a lot of people. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Like, we do make a lot of wonderful pieces for for children, and mm-hmm. I wanted to say, if that's all right, a nice hello to Hudson and Margo. They're very young hello. Very young little girls that, um, that I think... Uh, I, I'm hoping that there will be a lot of young people who are listening to the station who mm-hmm. can appreciate the, the classical and jazz music that you that you air for, for us listeners. Well, we're very appreciative of that. And uh, we're, we're also happy because we have a contest we're yes. running. Now, we, uh, we're doing a contest that starts on Monday. It's called a Classically Sweet Valentine's Day. I should mention, I'm in the studio with uh, Chocolatier Constance Pop. She has her uh, shop down on Provence here. Uh, we'll put the information about it uh, on our website, and we'll link her website as well, how to, uh, where it is on Provence. Um, it is 180 Provence. Uh, but we we're doing a contest, which ends on February, uh, Friday, Friday, February 12th. We're doing a draw for a grand prize of a basket of musical chocolates from Chocolatier Constance Pop. Uh, begins on Monday, where we'll play a classically sweet, a classical suite, and you have to call in to... I identify the piece and uh, we'll we'll, uh, sign you up so you can uh, enter to win that contest. So can you give us just a hint of what might be in the basket? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it is near Valentine's, so we do make a lot of very interesting Valentine chocolates. Mm -hmm. And so definitely this uh, basket will have some Valentine chocolates. I know right now we're making our caramel and marshmallow hearts and our passion fruit and marshmallow hearts. And then we have a... Uh, what we call our relationship series chocolates <laughs> mm. and it's our way of sort of poking fun at, at at love and and so some of the pieces inside uh this series um one would be uh l'amour which is just just lovely uh raspberries dipped in amaretto and, and soaked in amaretto and and white rum and then we have um uh, a puppy love, which is a honey truffle with a little cinnamon heart on top. Mm-hmm. Then we also have uh, drowning in sorrow, uh, which is vodka soaked in vodka, uh, blueberries soaked in vodka, which wow. you will need after you have the mistress. <laughs> <laughs> and that is uh, Jamaican rum, I think, and dark chocolate with little lips on top. And so we just, you're just, it's just a silly. Yeah, we we kind of mm. think Valentine's is just a fun event. We don't take it seriously at all, and mm-hmm. and think it's for everybody. We even have uh, a, a, what we call Valentine's for you because we just think it's just for for all of us. Just you know, just mm-hmm. uh, love is for all of us, and and you can you can have it with chocolate. Sounds amazing. So that prize package will be available Friday, February twelfth. Tune in Monday as we begin the contest. Um, you know, we could. Ch- keep chatting i know there's so many other things you guys do at the bakery you do make the hot chocolate you do all yep. those spicy chocolate uh, drink spicy chocolate drink with made with almond milk you do the uh yes. little uh what uh pastries yes we pastries do pastries sometimes so. and little little and macarons mm-hmm. and we make lots of little things yes yeah so it's a great great shop it's just in there yesterday